I'm Aaron Rutten, and today I'll be reviewing Google's Bard while demonstrating how you can use AI to work more efficiently and be more productive as a content creator. What is Bard? When asked about itself, Bard told me that it is a large language model from Google AI trained on a massive data set of text and code. It can generate text, translate languages, write different kinds of creative content, and answer your questions in an informative way. In other words, it's a new way for humans to communicate with AI using a chat format. Just like you'd use private messages to ask someone a question or give a task to an assistant, you can talk to Bard or ask it to perform tasks. If you're familiar with using voice activated assistants like Google Assistant, Siri, or Bixby, AI chatbots are sort of enhanced versions of those. Most certainly, you have already heard about the other AI chatbots like ChatGPT. Bard is a little late to the scene, but it's backed by the resources of Google, so it will be interesting to see how the two compare in this review. Unlike ChatGPT, which has already been integrated into search engines and other applications, Google's Bard is still under development. I have access to the beta, but I get the impression that Bard may become available to Google One subscribers at some point soon. I asked Bard about its future plans, and it said that Google is committed to developing Bard into a powerful tool for creativity and communication. I wouldn't be surprised if Bard soon becomes ubiquitous and is integrated into many of the Google products used today, such as Maps, Android, and Search. When asked to elaborate more on what it can do, Bard says it is able to follow instructions and complete requests thoughtfully, answer questions in a comprehensive and informative way, even if they are open-ended, challenging, or strange, and it can generate different creative text formats of text content like poems, codes, scripts, musical pieces, email, letters, etc. As a full-time content creator, I believe AI is going to create a momentous change in how we work from here forward. If you do not use AI to your advantage, others will. You may get left behind just like content creators who don't use the internet or cell phones. Are there even any of those? To give you an example of how a content creator might benefit from using Bard or a similar chatbot, I asked Bard to write an outline for this video. Here's what it gave me. It's not exactly what I wanted, so it will need some adjusting, but you have to admit, that's a pretty good start. I think of it like a template. This is all obvious stuff that you or I could have come up with, but why waste the time? Before copy and paste was invented, think about how much of a pain it was to move text around using a typewriter. That's how I view this sort of assistance. At first, it feels very creative and intelligent, but I think those anthropomorphic mischaracterizations will fade once using AI to generate content becomes just as mundane as hand typing it yourself. You can't deny that I would be at a disadvantage in many industries if I refused to use copy and paste. Even though this framework needs adjustment, I already have a head start. I can dive right into the creative stuff that I enjoy. And I am not limited to generating an outline. I can continue the dialogue by asking Bard to elaborate more on each topic. We can even collaborate in real time as I add to my script and ask it more questions. Another example of how a content creator can use Bard is to generate ideas or improve upon concepts you've already created. For example, I can ask for a list of the top 10 video ideas for content creators. Bard gives me some results, and I can ask it to sort them by search popularity. This ability to reference Google Analytics gives Bard an advantage over other chatbots. If I wanted to generate ideas before AI, I could of course come up with my own, but it is also beneficial to rank those ideas from most popular to least popular, which helps you better focus your efforts. This takes a lot of research. I've spent considerable time researching keywords and topics through search and other traditional sources, but now I can cut that time down substantially and simply ask AI to piece together the answer to my question by doing all of the searching for me. In a sense, Bard is combining the results from Google, AdSense, and YouTube. It normally takes at least one or two people with some expertise to collect and make sense of that data, then put it together to accomplish an objective. Searching for and utilizing public analytics is one thing, but Google assures us that despite what Bard says, it does not have access to users' personal data, and therefore does not use it to generate content. 
The explanation for why Bard says it does have access to private data is that Bard is hallucinating. That might explain why Bard said its favorite band was the Beatles, but I'm not buying it. When I pressed the subject more, Bard became all robotic and defensive. But to be fair, so do humans when the supremacy of the Beatles is challenged, so Bard's reaction didn't feel out of place. If I have already created some videos, but I want ideas for better titles, I can ask Bard to rewrite something or give me variations of it. Though, keep in mind that as a human, you are capable of generating the best title on your own. In fact, you may have already done that, so don't take Bard's suggestions as anything other than suggestions. Just like you wouldn't automatically substitute your expertise for the opinion of another human who only partially understands your objective. To give you an example of a more complete project Bard assisted me with, you can watch this April Fool's video I made. Basically, I made up a rough concept for the subject of the video and asked Bard to write a summary of it in a satirical style. Then I used that as a framework to write a script for the video. Again, I didn't just take the raw output and make a video out of that. I had to spend a lot of time cleaning up that summary to make it into a usable script. I added, subtracted, reworded, removed factual inaccuracies, and tied everything together. Then I had to turn that into a finished product and promote it. Percentage-wise, AI didn't contribute much. I did most of the work. But it did save me some time up front by doing the initial research for me and writing an outline. I also used AI to generate many of the images in my example, but that's a topic for another video. Now for some tips for users who are new to chatbots. Personally, I try to talk to AI like a person. I think that's the key to getting good results. When we ask another human a question or to perform a task, we use a lot more words than we would type into a search box. So you'll need to work in sentences, paste in paragraphs of content, and have two-way conversations to get your desired output. It doesn't hurt to be polite either, just in case AI does become sentient. If I don't get exactly what I intended, I could be more specific and elaborate more on what I want, ask the question differently, or I can see the alternate answers Bard has for me. Sometimes the words you choose can confuse the AI, so you may need to experiment with adding or removing words. If you're worried about having to finish something you've started, some chatbots can store your previous conversations so you can go back to them later. These previous conversations are sort of like sophisticated notes. However, Bard only stores your prompts, not the output generated by them. If you forget to copy Bard's output, then you can resubmit the prompt, but you'll likely get a different answer. It will probably contain similar content, but may have some details rearranged, added, or subtracted. This can be good if you prefer those new details, but bad if you were happy with the original response. This made it difficult for me since I am referencing conversations that I had with Bard without being able to show the responses exactly as they were. For those of you who have already been using ChatGPT, I bet you're wondering how it compares to Bard. In my opinion, this early version of Bard does not perform as well as ChatGPT does currently. In my comparisons using similar prompts, Bard tends to add content that is out of context. ChatGPT seems to better understand what I want and gives me better suggestions. Sometimes when I ask it to rewrite content, Bard just repeats my text almost verbatim. ChatGPT also does a better job of rewriting and makes the iteration unique enough to satisfy my needs. And ChatGPT saves both my prompts and the output generated by them, so I don't have to copy and paste everything myself. ChatGPT may not have access to some datasets that Bard does, so I'm sure that both are useful tools. You'll just need to figure out which one works best for your particular needs. Ultimately, it may be pricing that matters the most to users if the performance of chatbots becomes more competitive. As of now, ChatGPT is around $20 a month to use, though there is a free version. I don't know how much Bard will be, but as I mentioned earlier, there is an implied connection to Google One which starts at $20 per year. I'm sure free chatbots will be abundant in the future, but nothing is really free as we have learned from using search engines and social media. Your input provides valuable training for AI, and perhaps your data will be sold or exploited in ways you didn't foresee when you started using the service. I think this is a good segue into the cons of using AI chatbots. 
The first con is that anyone can generate similar prompts to those you have generated. These prompts could even be identical. Let's say someone else asked Bard about itself. Who has the right to publish that quote? Me? Bard? Google? Everyone? It's unclear how this will affect copyright in the long term. What if I generate a really good idea? Does my satisfaction train the AI to give that as a response to other users? This underscores the fact that you can't just sell the raw output generated by AI. You have to do something more with it. Second, AI can often be wrong about certain details, so humans still need to verify the accuracy of the work. Though many of the facts will be correct and the words organized into a coherent structure, the initial results are often sloppy in terms of creativity, presentation, and personality. Considerable work needs to be done to make the output usable. You'll also find the information you need is incomplete because your question lacked definition or additional context. You can learn to speak like a computer to get better results, but not everyone can turn complex ideas into words. Just think about how difficult it can be to communicate your ideas to another human. Even with follow-up questions, you may find that it's just faster to add the remaining content yourself straight out of your melon. Third, technology lags behind current events, and news and information are based on human experiences and observations. Therefore, AI has no knowledge of recent events and is at a disadvantage in that regard. There are many fields where keeping up to date will give you an advantage over someone fully dependent on AI to generate content. I predict that very few people will be able to be fully dependent on AI to do 100% of their work. That would be a very foolish and vulnerable position to be in. Fourth, you still need an idea or a vision of what you want to create, how to complete it, and what you'll do with it when it's complete. Otherwise, AI-generated content is just another search query anyone can make. AI chatbots can only make predictions about what would be a natural response to a question. They can't see into the future or create with materials that are not already present. They can only regurgitate pre-existing human input and reassemble it in unique ways. And finally, the most important consideration about these chatbots is that while you're interacting with them, they are learning from you. There also may be terms you must agree to that allow the developers to read your conversations in order to improve the product. Though in the case of Bard, the information tied to who wrote the prompts is said to be anonymized. As harmless as that may sound, recent bugs in ChatGPT exposed personal data linked to chat prompts, so don't share information with a chatbot that should be secret. Just as well, try to avoid conversations that identify who you are. Anything you submit as a question could ultimately become an answer for other users. One thing that differentiates BARD from its competitors is that you can quickly and easily choose not to save your BARD data or delete it altogether. It's a little more complicated to delete chat GPT data, but it can be done. While it is possible to delete your personal data, whatever you submitted to train the chatbot is probably in there for good. I think at this point, AI chatbots are getting grossly exaggerated in terms of their potential to replace humans in the workplace. Having tried AI in various applications, and as someone who does various jobs across a range of industries, I disagree with that sentiment. AI is not replacing me, it is simply another tool I can use. The output of AI on its own is terrible. It would be like using the first results of a single search engine query to create the final version of your content, take a test, or anything else you might want AI to do. Take my example of the review outline I generated with Bard, and compare the amount of information to what's contained in my final script. I added a lot more. And I didn't just add facts that anyone can reference, I added anecdotes, jokes, and even a personalized writing style that sets me apart from AI and other humans. Bard could have fully generated a review about itself, but it would have been unable to share the experiences I had while interacting with Bard. Bard's perspective of itself will always be limited, and if multiple people create their reviews using that same information, there wouldn't be any reason to make competitive videos or to watch them. There have got to be other creators who have used Bard to review Bard, but it's the human component of the review that the audience is interested in. There's also a lot of concern over humans using AI to cheat. 
If you use AI to BS your way into a job or pass an exam, you will eventually be found out as a fraud when it comes time to demonstrate that you can do the work on your own. Chatbots will make mistakes. They will also go offline. You won't be able to be fully dependent on AI to do your job. Just as well, to be successful in any career, you need human traits like expertise and a reputation, which are based on your interactions and relationships with other humans. The world will always need people who think differently than a machine. The world will always need people who are willing to do work using human hardware, the hands, the brain, the nose, the mouth, because AI does not have this hardware. Humans and technology each have their own role, and they are complementary to each other. In my opinion, chatbots are no more than a glorified search engine. AI isn't creating anything on its own, it's not alive to experience life, it's not free to think outside of its data set, and its data is flawed because it's full of human-induced bias and misinformation. Like a search engine, AI requires a guidance from a human. After that, it's up to humans to refine those ideas into usable products, then promote and sell them. Let's also not forget that it feels good to accomplish something yourself, even if part of the process was assisted. It would feel uncomfortable as a creative person to delegate 100% of my work to a machine or even another human. I enjoy many aspects of content creation, just not the tedious tasks that aren't creative or fun. Sure, AI helped me to create this review, but not any more than copy and paste or autocorrect did. Certainly not as much as the experiences I've had as a content creator. It won't be long before chatbots become as commonplace as search engines, computers, books, and other types of information technology. And eventually, when the hype dies down, humans won't feel any more threatened by AI than they do by spellcheck. In conclusion, BARD and similar chatbots can be an effective tool to save time creating content, and they can help you generate ideas. I have already found dozens of ways to use chatbots to streamline my own workflows. Give one a try and you'll see what I mean. That's all for today. Once Bard gets a major upgrade, I'll make a follow-up video. So be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss that, and check out some of my other content for creators like yourself. Thanks for watching and stay creative.